Hello everybody, thank you for clicking on the video first and foremost. My name is Altamir, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are going to be getting into just speculation on what is next for the Elder Scrolls Online video game. Um, like what will the, what will next year's chapter going to be? That's pretty much what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So sit down, relax, grab a snack, and let's dive right on in. Um, now, first of all, obviously, I just want to say most of these, um, obviously, it's speculation, so it's just my opinion. I mean, that's kind of a duh, but you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> so first, I want to say, now this is going to be 2024, but also... It's, it is huge for ZeniMax because it is the 10th anniversary. Now, what does that mean? Well, to me, it means that the chapter really can't be something like, um, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, I'm sorry, but I mean, I think you have to pick a popular you know, a, a popular land to go to. You just do. I mean, you know, I mean, you really, really do. Is look, look at the overall map here. If I can. Can we get rid of the way shrines? No, the overall map here, and it's like, okay, so where can you go? Where, where will the future of Elder Scrolls Online be? God, this is so wrong. Anyway, um... In, for, for 2024. It's the 10th anniversary. So, I know a lot of people are like, well, like, you know, we haven't had Bosmer yet. Okay, well, it's very true in terms of chapter. We haven't had Bosmer, and it is very... Now, if you look here, this is Valenwood. All of Valenwood is in the old is in the old mare dominion um quest line because well they didn't for whatever reason they didn't want to touch any of the elsewhere although in alpha i've been told they're actually um it was different you know, the old marriage zones were different, and there was actually some elsewhere zones. But anyway, getting sidetracked here. So because Alt Altmer, Altmer had pretty much the high elves, they have, like, no land. They have Somerset and, and Ordon, really. That's it. And, like, a lot of islands around. I think the Somerset Isles have about 16 islands. So, you know, you got Ivea, you got Ordon, you got Somerset. You have um, Artam. Um, how many islands went to where Artam is is the question. Is a question because it is said in game that um, it's not just Artam where it is. A any islands that were in the general vicinity seem to get dragged as well, which is why we got that house apparently. But again, getting sidetracked. So I, I mean, I, I don't know where they could go. I mean, some of the islands around here. You know, some of the islands that are, you know, off in the distance here. But are the Bosma popular enough? To me, no. I don't really think they are. I'm sorry. You know, the, you explore a lot of, a lot of them in the Old Mary zones. Now, I mean, we explore a lot of the races in, in their respective zones. Yes. But they're not really that popular to me, you know, and I think this is the 10th anniversary. It has to be something big. It has to be something, you know, out there. So usually we get hints um, in chapters, you know, about um, where we're going to go next. Someone says, oh, I'm going to travel. Da, 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 da. And I did, I will say, if you check out my necrom video um my necrom review i did pretty sure i did like every quest in necrom 
Apocrypha, like Tilvani Peninsula. There are definitely two that I did not do. Um, well, three that I did not do. And one is... Um, just so no one tries to group with me. Um, you know, two are the companion quests. And then another one's just finishing up one for the uh, the min place. So, you know, at the end, if you don't know, when you do chapters, you get those celebratory, you know, um, like a celebration of what you've done. And you get to talk to people if you and that's the reason why one of the reasons why you do all the side quests first is you get a bigger celebration. But you also get some hints. And that's where the fun stuff is, right? The only thing that was in this year's was um, there was a quest. No, I'll pause right here. Obviously, there's going to be spoilers here. You know, I'm not going to dance around anything. I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as I can. But there are still obviously going to be spoilers, so just keep that in mind. So there was a quest in Tilvani Peninsula. I don't remember what, um, which one it is. Why is this blackened? Oh my god. Anyway, there's a bug going around where it's saying that you didn't do quests in these places. There's even a guy standing right here, and I can't pick up this quest even though I already did it. Anyway, it's it, it's so so buggy right now. But anyway, there's a quest with somebody who's sick, and she, he has a girlfriend, and you have a, choices of spending time with him or she. Um, she. Brain fart. It's really late. Um, she travels the world to find a cure for him. I chose to travel the world to find a cure. And she says she's going to Winterhold next. Now, I think this is big because Winterhold, probably about right... I mean, it should be right here. But East March is in the wrong freaking area, Zenimax. Um, so it should, it's probably this, I, if I had to guess. This is probably Winterhold. I don't know. But, um... You know, it... it um. That would be an interesting one to me if we went to Winterhold because I think there's a lot to explore there. You know, um, you know, and for everybody's like, oh, but we're already there in Skyrim. Yes and no. You have to remember that in Skyrim, Winterhold was destroyed. So we only got maybe like problem uh, i mean of the city alone we got maybe five percent of the city think about it this way and this is the way i kind of think about it if you go to winterhold how big is it going to be you know i mean zenimax can pretty much do almost whatever they want with that city you know beyond the first like few steps because you gotta remember the city ended at the call of the winterhold but i don't think that's how big the city was and they and Zenimax can make the city as big as they want. You know, they really can. Because the odds of Bethesda ever going back to Skyrim is pretty slim. I mean, we're all gonna be dead and gone probably before Elder Scrolls 7 at the pace that they're going. You know. Dinosaurs will rule the world again, and they'll be playing freaking Skyrim too. It's you know, so they can do whatever they want with Winterhold to say, let's say, like most cities, most cities have a jail. Most cities have, you know, and Winterhold, the Winterhold jail, if anyone who doesn't play Skyrim, it has a jail. It's way out there. So you got to sit there and think, okay, well, what if the jail was actually originally connected to the city and it did actually go out that, and the city actually went out that far? It jettisoned out that far like a like solitude right you know maybe they still had the um like because you also have like where Iskamore landed he could still land there it doesn't mean that there wasn't a huge stretch of land 
you know, that extended out all the way to Winterhold Jail and maybe even, you know, like that, that, um, that Nordic ruin that's kind of buried in ice. Maybe that was part of the city. They could do whatever they want and they can make the city as big or as small as they want. I think they should go big, but whatever. And here's the beautiful thing too, is they could even put like snow elf rooms out there or someone had, I saw someone had mentioned frost giant camps. I think that would be really cool because they could do whatever they want in that region because they could just justify it because of Red Mountain exploding. And when Red Mountain erupted, it destroyed Winterhold. It destroyed all of Winterhold. It changed Solstheim. So they could justify it with that so easily. That's the reason why a lot of those things that we see in ESO Winterhold are gone by Skyrim. Because, well, the sea swallowed it. It happens, you know. But maybe people don't want to go back there. I do, but another region that would be very popular for the 10th anniversary, and again, I say the 10th anniversary, it can't be, I'm sorry to these people who love these races, I, I, I really am, I mean, this is just my opinion though, you can't be going the VAR, you know, you can't be doing more Bosmer stuff, or even Argonian stuff, I like Bosmer, I would love to do a, a Fallen Esty. DLC, you know, chapter that focuses on Fallen Esty. Maybe you get to see the Imga. Obviously, there's a huge hiccup in lore with Fallen Esty because it does return later in the Second Era, about, like, I think 300 years from now. But you could just justify that because it's in another plane of existence, you know? But it... it you can't be going there. You can't be going there. You, yeah, there's... I, I really, really, really think... There's two places you can go for this. And really only two. Maybe a third, now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe, but I think that would be kind of like a... Maybe, like, don't do this kind of thing. But there's really two places you can go. Hammerfell. And Winterhold. That's the only two places you can go. Or you can go Dawn, you know, Dawnstar, or you can go Whiterun. I think Winter holds the bigger pull because the mystery of what happened to to uh, Winterhold would just increase. It would be, wow! Look at this! Look at the city before it destroyed. It would get people to go back into Skyrim. Think about it from a business standpoint, okay? You do winterhold and it gets people to go back in this guy it gets people to go back to winterhold and look at all these places and go look at everything that got destroyed you, you know what was right here it you know it was a frost giant camp now it's gone that's so crazy that's so cool like it gets people to it gets people interested and i think that's one of the things you do another reason why you do it and why you do red guard is because Hammerfell is so popular, and there was a quest in northern elsewhere, southern elsewhere. If everyone remembers, I don't remember which one it was now because that was a long time ago. But Sai Sahan remembered how to be a sword singer. Wouldn't that be of interest to, you know, wouldn't that be some sort of interest to the Daedric Prince of Knowledge? If by some odd chance he doesn't know. I mean he did. And I know what some people are probably thinking. How could he not know? He didn't know anything about the skull from Dragonborn. He was so interested in them that he. You know he. Had to kill one to absorb the knowledge. And where they came from. And, what, and, and all that kind of stuff. So why wouldn't he be interested in, in how the Red Guards became sword singers again, right? That's something to do. And here's the thing. This 10th anniversary could be so big. It could be. I don't know if it will be. It could be. I'm gonna just...
Sorry, he's annoying me. Um, it could be so big because this is the danger print of knowledge we're dealing with, right? So you could justify just about anything. You really could. Because you're in a, a realm that is filled with books of secrets from the future, from the past, from, pre you know, all kinds of stuff, right? So you could do just about anything when it comes to style pages to motifs to furnishings for anti antiquities furniture you could do you know very unique rewards from races that have that are long forgotten or even even like struggling like Carthringi or um L L um Lamothlet or snow elves or the left-handed elves even you could explore more if you go to hammerfell you could explore more but the left-handed elves you know it, it's you could do just about anything because the day it's a day print of knowledge it's completely justified but here you know who is the boss gonna be you know that's also another question if you haven't played the ending of necrom spoilers but you know we we defeated or at least i mean as much as we can defeat a day a day to prince we defeated vermina's vessel that she used sending her back okay so you could probably consider her probably done in the story maybe or maybe she takes a back seat um because the you know the periite guy kind of got away right I think he did. Um, so what do you do with that? You know, how do you... Is Periite going to be the next boss? In the next chapter? Is he going to be the focus? That'd be kind of cool. Is it going to be somebody completely different? I mean, keep in mind that this is... They're going back to how they used to do things, at least a little bit where stories go over multiple years. If the people don't know, um, the Daedric Triad, Daedric Prince, whatever you, Daedric War, I don't know, what, I really don't know what you want to call it. Um, that storyline, I mean, technically started with Rothgar, really. I mean, it was the end but of Rothgar, but technically started with Rothgar. It went into Vardenfell, and then Clockwork City, and then Somerset, you know, it, it spanned multiple years. And that's what they want to do here. So who's going to be the next boss? Is it going to be, you know, we didn't fight Perry. So is it going to be, is it going to be him? Is it going to, you know, what happens with, you know, the... And I'm sorry, I can't. I can't talk about, you know, I can't avoid the spoiler ending for Necrom, so stop and close the video if you don't want to know. But the new Dage of Prince, or, you know, and even that opens up so many questions with the, you know, it, it makes sense on why Jagaleg got turned into Shea Gorath. Why in the ancient war between Ariel, Trinimac, and Lorcan and their and their forces, why they decided to shoot Lorcan's heart? Because you can't really kill, right? Unless, of course, you sacrifice like the Aedra did. I mean, there's so many questions. Okay, so does that mean Trinimac's not dead? You know, it, it, it is for some weird reason is he gonna show up? You know, what about this new this new Daedric Prince? Where have they been? Because if a Daedric Prince can't die, technically, then where has this Prince been? You know, you know, is it smart to inject the Prince so, or, you know, in the Second Era and then have later games have no reference to them? I think that's kind of dangerous. But, I mean, I think this is obviously something that Bethesda signed, signed off on. How is this new Daedric Prince going to lean into this? Are they going to get changed or, you know, is it going to be a Lorcan situation where you kill them as much as a Daedric Prince can be killed? You know? Yeah. I mean, it, or is 
you know, what's going to happen with the unraveling of the world when people understand and, yeah, I don't know, are things going to flip and is Hermaeus Moore going to be the bad guy? You know, for just assuming, I mean, Daedric, here's the history with the Daedric Princes. They don't like, they didn't like Jegeleg because he was the Daedric Prince of Order. Right? He was actually, it was weird because Lorcan was considered an Adra, sort of, right? But Jigal and no, no uh, Lorcan was an Adra that was considered a Daedra, really. But Jigalig was a Daedra that considered an Adra. You know all the difference. Just look it up, uesp.net. I'll put a link in the in below. I gotta write that down so I don't forget. Um. But they changed. They were so threatened that they took princes by Jagaleg and his power because he was the most powerful did your prince. They made him in the shade Gorath. And Hermaeus Mora was, and so that was their track record. They already had a track record. So when it came down to, you know, Athelia. And her power and what she was the Daedric Prince of, well, of course they were going to get rid of, you know, her or, you know, whatever. Because she was a threat. But, I don't know. It, it, I'd be really curious to see where it goes. I'm more curious about where. You know, where is really big because this is the 10th anniversary, everybody. You know? This is really the the tenth anniversary, and here's a twist of it. Here here's the huge twist: is the Nords could actually be partially enemies on this one because of their extreme hatred of Hermaeus Mor. I don't see them helping Hermaeus Mor. You know, so they could be actually enemies in this next chapter. That would be interesting. That'd be a huge twist. I think that'd be kind of cool. You know, and, and it's also a question of, you know, what are we going to get with the 10th anniversary? We just got the Arcanist with Necrom. People seem to be kind of enjoying that at least as much as they can. But are we going to get a new skill line? And this is the College of Winterhold, probably. You know, if they go to Win if they go to Win uh, Winterhold, their College of Winterhold is there. It's a perfect opportunity to do something unique like a new weapon line or a skill or a guild skill line you know somebody had pointed out on the forums that they could easily introduce like a spell sword where the character has a sword in their hand and like a rune in the other or one hand in rune and that way they wouldn't have to add any new weapons to anything you're just taking the sword what's already dropped and just giving it another purpose it's the same thing we do with Dual Wield, right? So they wouldn't have to change much, you know? So that's about the easiest one there. I mean, are we, we going to get anything else about Murak? You know, because he's still in prison, but I mean, he's obviously released at some point to lead the Dragonborn. Is there anything going to be more on Murak? I doubt that, but that'd be kind of cool, you know? You could have Akaviri, you know, because like I said before, it's the Deja Prince of Knowledge. You could have Akaviri stuff. There's so many different avenues they could go down with this. But yeah, like I said, like I, it's the tenth anniversary, and the in you, you're gonna probably stick to Tamriel. There's only a few places you can go that make any sense. They're going to draw in because I think you need to make this special and big. You need to go big on the 10th anniversary, in my opinion. Maybe I'm insane. But I think you need to go big. And it needs to be either Hammerfell or somewhere. I hope it's uh, Winterhold, but somewhere in what, Whiterun. I'm sorry, but Skyrim was... Bethesda, one of Bethesda's biggest games. It put them on the map, really. My fear 
is they might finish off the Talani Peninsula in this island here. They might do something with these. That's my fear. Because, I mean, that would mean yet another Dark Elf kind of chapter, and I don't really know how I feel about that right now. Um, now, for all of you curious, like, what, you know, we still have Redguard and Bosmer left, you know, for lands. They haven't gotten chapters yet, da da da. Well, you, you have to think of this as not only, you know, like a fan, but as a, like a business, right? And this is an opportunity. This is a milestone. Isn't it, right? I mean, it is. It is a milestone that you're not going to be able to reach again until year 15, which is, well, it's going to be five years, obviously, from from 2024 so there this is an opportunity it's a rare opportunity it's raining in apocrypha that's so cool it's raining ink that's cool it this is a really really big opportunity you know for Zenimax, and i think you need to go big i do i really really think you do um you know that i and that's why I, I chose the, the lands I did. I'm thinking Winterhold over the other places like Dawnstar and Whiterun and what's over here again? <laughs> um, because it was the more popular one. The, the Winterhold mystery and what happened to it was huge, right? Um... You know, so to be able to fill out the city and even the land around it, which I don't even know if they're going to do, but I think that'd be smart. Think about, like, think about, like, this way, where it doesn't screw up where you can more landed in the coast and whatever. You could have a sing, you know, you could have a singular out there, you know, where the, it just kind of goes out more. Maybe a few over here, you know what I mean? Like, they could do a lot. They could also go to Hammerfell. And that would be just as popular as Winterhold, I think. I think you can't lose with either of those two. But if you go to Cyrodiil again, or, you know, Bosmer, or, you know, finish off Khajiit here, or Argonian, I don't think it'd be as popular. I really don't. And I think the one thing you have to avoid uh, is probably doing things in the order you did before. So you don't go from Dark Elf to another Elf. Because you went from Dark Elf to High Elf. You can't go Dark Elf to, like, Bosmer, really. I mean, just kind of following the same pattern you did years ago with Vardenfell into Somerset, right? I'm hoping they finish because Nords have such a high... Hermaeus Mora is all over the Nord lore. There's even rumors that Hermaeus Mora might be one of the reasons why the Nords aren't in that Mora anymore. That there was a war with him. I don't know how true that is. But that's what I read somewhere. So what do you get? I mean, what does everybody here think? Where do you, where would you want to go? You know? You know, I mean, are we going... To, we can't exactly go back to Apocrypha, right? I mean, may, maybe we do. Maybe we cert go to another part of Apocrypha with Winterhold, or maybe it's just Winterhold, or maybe it's Hammerf you know, Hammerfell. Where do you want to go? I know a lot of Bosmer fans out there. I, I don't mind the Bosmer lore. I really don't. It's definitely on my list of places I'd love to. I, I want to see all these places, but obviously I have a list. And Winterhold at the top of my list. Winterhold is one of the only Nord lands left that it's really high on my list. White Run's not really high on my list. Dawnstar's not really high on my list. I think they're even Bosmers before those two. But Winterhold's high on my list, and Redguards are high on my list. 
Argonians are on my list, but I mean, they have a lot of land left. Um, Dark Elves are really low on my list now. Gajit's pretty high on my list. But this is the top right here. Winterhold. So what do you guys think? You want to go to Winterhold? You know, I mean, I think that Zoss has to hit a home run with this one. I mean, I I'm not saying their game depends on it. But it kind of does. No. Uh, but, I mean, a l their game might depend on it, depending on what people's response to Starfield is. The one thing that's dangerous right now is, you know, I'm seeing a lot of streamers for Elder Scrolls Online and, and just a lot of players where a lot of small things are starting to add up. You know, a lot of small, e even with myself. You know, like, I, I I'll always love this game. But, you know, if another game comes out that looks more fun, well, I'm going to want to play that. I'll probably come back to this game when that when I burn out of that other game. So I'm never going to be gone from this game completely. But you see people, even even other streamers, or you know, where you know they're putting out messages saying, you know, when Starfield drops, you know, they aren't going to be as focused on ESO anymore. And it's it's just the name of the game. People move on. So far, Elder Scrolls Online has survived a lot of those. They've survived the New Worlds. They've survived, you know, the Black Desert Onlines. They've survived a lot of... They've survived a lot of games coming out. But at a certain point, you know, I'm not saying that the game's going to just die, but, I mean, the population will decrease by a lot. Some of it will be small things adding up, and some of it will be people excited about another game. We're gamers. We have short extensions, attention spans. I do. It's the reason why when I do these videos, I pretty much stay in one. I try to stay in one spot because when I move around like this, it's really, really, really hard for me to stay on topic because I just get really enamored with where I am in the shinies. I think this has to be a home run, and they have to add... I almost want to say they have to add a ton of content. I do. What's this notification? I don't think I've ever been online when the new reward flipped. Um, at least since they've changed the timing of it. I think it has to be huge, because they they need it to be. What do you think? It has to be a home run after the controversy that's coming out now that I, I'm not going to get into with the employee that, you know, with the employee that's coming out. You know, it's like they, they really need a home run. And what better way to do it than your 10th anniversary? Go all out, go big or go home. You know. That's that's pretty much it. You know, I think that I really did love this story. You know, putting in a new day to Prince and uh, it, it's 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 like okay, so where is this going? Especially when Her Hermes Mora said, "Well, day to princes don't die. They don't. I mean, even Jigalik's still alive. I mean, heck, we released him from being Shea Gorath and in Oblivion, so he's been his own day to Prince for." Since Oblivion ended, some more like most of the fourth era, he's been his own Data Prince, assuming you know. I, I don't know what's gonna happen with the new Data Prince. What do you think? I think that speculating how they're gonna end this. Um, I think somehow the secret won't get out of Athelia. She'll be whispers and rumors in the wind, you you know. Hermaeus Mora will win. And 
Ferriite and Vermina and, and whoever else involved will 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 lose. You know, maybe they'll know the secret of of this Deja Prince, but you know, ultimately they'll lose and things will be status quo. That's what I think is gonna happen. Hermes Moore is gonna win. Tamriel's not gonna know about the new Deja Prince. Move on to the next story. So anyway, this has been way too long. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and enjoying or hating my rambles. Um, if you've made it this far, I would suggest please like the video if you liked it. Um, subscribe, it, you know, if you want to see more videos. I try to put out videos every, um, like, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, but... It varies depending on my schedule because my schedule varies a lot. But usually every Wednesday, Friday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday is when I like to put out videos. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and click notifications too. Really helps out, you know, because I mean, I'm a YouTube. You know, I I watch YouTube. I subscribe to a lot of different YouTubers and. Some of them will put out videos, and I'm like, oh, man, I didn't know he put out a new video in the world. I didn't know she put out a new video with it. You know, so do the notification so you, so you, you know, you at least keep track. So um, that's it for this video, everybody. Um, get ready for a very long wait until we find out what's going on. We're not even in, you know... What do you think of the um, last question? What do you guys think of the new format? Now that I think people who asked for the change, it's finally starting to sink in. That, oh, asking, you know, for a change to your long stories meant means, well, we might not have content in quarter four. You know, I think that's probably the smarter way to go, given the game. They really need to focus on fixing this freaking thing. It's been broken since Western Skyrim. You know, they really, I mean, COVID didn't help. So they need to focus on fixing this freaking thing. Rewriting, doing the multi-threading, which check out that video, because um, the head honcho updated us on it. Um... You know, I, I, this game needs to not still be in the process of, you know, fixing performance, even for PvP. Like, just, I don't care anymore. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I just fix it, you know, so. But go big or go home in 2024. Give me Winterhold. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, as I said before. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.